Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech, and I can finally compare the next gen gaming performance of the Samsung Q90 QLED and the LG C10 OLED using an actual HDMI 2.1 next gen console. And to do that, I'll need an HDMI 2.1 receiver, and that will be the Denon X Poly 700H, which is HDMI 2.1 compatible. But I'm sure that you've probably heard by now that there's an issue with the HDMI 2.1 chipset that the HDMI 2.1 receivers released in 2020 uses where it is incompatible with 4K 120Hz signal with HDR enabled. But that got me thinking, is that really the case? And if so, isn't there a workaround? Well, I have some good news, but before that, hey Siri, turn on the Christmas tree. Before we even get into the video, if you're new to the channel and like to see and learn more about home theater audio and video, then you have come to the right place because here we do home theater audio and video reviews, demos, and comparisons, as well as tests like these to help you find the best devices and get the most out of them. So if you're new here, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So to do this test, we'll be using the Xbox Series X because not only is it one of the affected HDMI 2.1 devices, but it can also be set to output at 4K 120 Hertz by default for everything. So that's what we'll be doing right here so we can have the signal that we need to test with. So let's get into it. The first thing we'll do is go into the settings and verify the TV details. So currently the resolution is 4K and the refresh rate is 60 Hertz, which is default. And if we go into the 4K TV details and verify the details of all the modes that the TV supports, then we see that it supports everything except for Dolby Vision. And that's as we'd expect. So if we go into video modes, we can see that everything is enabled except for allowing YCC 422, which is lower than the 444 that is supported if you don't have that checked. And that's what we want, right? So what we're gonna do now is go into the receiver and enable the 8K slash 4K 120 signal. So currently it's at enhanced and to enable the 4k 120 or 8k 60 we have to switch to 8k enhanced and to do that you need a high speed hdmi 2.1 cable which we already have so we are going to back out of this and go back to the console so now that we're back into the console we can go back to settings What the heck? The console isn't responding, like, at all. That's weird. That was very weird. So once I restarted the controller, it came back up. Then we go back to the settings and we go to TV display. And now we're going to enable that 120 hertz mode to see what actually happens. Hi. And we have no signal. So the Xbox is connected to the HDMI port 4 because that's the port that supports 120 frames per second at 4K on this particular TV. So as we can see, that did not work because of the issue. So it switched back to the 4K 60 mode. So we're back to 4K 60. So if we actually want to enable 120 Hertz, what we have to do is go back to the receiver and disable 8K enhance and put it back to just plain enhance. And now we're back to 
the TV, we can actually go to 60, uh, go to the um, refresh rate again and switch to 120 hertz, and we'll see what happens now. Now it it is granting us the ability to keep that refresh rate, so we say yes, we want to keep it, and there we have it, 4K at 120 hertz. But this comes at a cost, so. As you can see in the details, it's 4K with FreeSync at 120 hertz. And if we go back and we go into a game, now remember that we still have the same modes enabled that we did before. So everything except for YCC422. So we don't have that chroma subsampling uh, mode enabled and we still have FreeSync at 120 hertz at 4K. HDMI 4 in game mode. And once we get to continue our new game, our existing game, I mean, then we'll see that it begins. And here we have the caveat. So you can do 120 frames per second at 4K, you just won't have HDR. So that is the trade-off you'll have to make if you want to have 4K enabled while playing the game at 120 hertz output. So here I am back in game, 120 hertz, but at the same time, it's really smooth, but HDR isn't enabled. So if we go back to the home screen and we well, let's first close, let's first close this game, quit. And if we go back here and we switch to 60 hertz, and we go back to the game, we can see that VRR is now 60 hertz. And there we have it, HDR is enabled once again, as opposed to just now where it wasn't enabled. So we're trading resolution for dynamic range, not resolution, we're trading frame rate for dynamic range. And the game is being rendered at 60 hertz anyways, so you're not really trading uh, refresh rate in this case, not with this particular game. So you would be fine sticking with just a 60 hertz refresh rate with your receiver. Again, another workaround is to have your receiver connected directly to your TV and having your TV output uh, the signal to your receiver via EARC, which would be a lossless audio format. But that's another that's another story. We have to check and see if that induces any delay in the audio signal because of the uh, Dolby Atmos sound that would be a part of it. But as you see, 4K, 60 Hertz, HDR enabled. If you're playing a game like Dirt 5 with the 120 hertz mode that game will be rendered at 1440p so you can also go back into your settings and make the changes there where you'll where you'll essentially change your resolution down to 1080p which i don't really think well it depends i don't think it's worth it personally um I think the trade-off is for everyone to decide on their own whether, whether they want a resolution or frame rate depending on the game. On a racing game like Dirt 5, 
it is very smooth and the extra smoothness of 120 hertz as opposed to 60 hertz i'm not really sure if it's there if i could see it but i haven't tested that game in depth yet but we'll see but at the moment that's it and just so you know enabling ycc 422 will not help to have 4K enabled with 120 Hertz. So we can do that right now and test to see if using that uh, diminished chroma will actually help with 4K 120 Hertz. And now let's go to the receiver and select 444 or AK Enhanced I mean and see what happens You see the spinning ball of indecision and there you have it even with a 422 chroma we will not have 4k 120 enabled with the xbox series x what you have to do is either disable hdr entirely to use 4k 120 or use 4k at 60 hertz with hdr so as you see, there is a workaround, thankfully, but there are some compromises involved. So you just have to figure out what exactly is important to you and what kind of compromise you want to make if you want the really high frame rate gaming at 120 hertz. Do you want to do that without HDR or would you rather have a high frame rate at 60 hertz with HDR? It all depends on you. But there's also another workaround where you can have the console connected directly to your TV and have your TV output via ERC to your receiver where it will transfer the lossless audio to your receiver. That will be another workaround, but there may be some audio delay involved in that. I'm not sure I haven't done that test yet, but let me know if that's a test you want to see. I can do it. But yeah, now you know. So if you like my t-shirt, by the way, and you want one for yourself, then make sure to check it out in the merch store. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if this workaround was helpful to you, if you'll be implementing any of it. And don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. For the next gen gaming comparison of both these TVs and other next gen and home theater videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.